she almost had a normal human torso, <laughs> but the lower body of something more mythical. Welcome to This Is Not Happening presents Fisticuffs. If you've never been to the show before, this is a bunch of comics telling fun stories about real shit that happened. It's my pleasure to introduce all of you to Mr. Big J. Okerson, everybody. Let him hear it. Thank you, Ari. Wow. How do you follow that gangbang fistfuck of hilarious storytelling? I decided to tell a story about the best fight I've ever seen rather than a fight that I was in because, like, I don't even really get in a ton of fights. I'm hard to piss off because, like, a wise person told me a few years ago, if you ever let words hurt you, like, you'll lose every fight. But if words never hurt you, you can never lose. Like, you can't break my fucking heart with anything. Like, as someone told me recently, they go, uh, they go, your mother's sucking dicks down by the docks. And I was like, well, she's not charging enough because we're still eating a lot of spaghetti and butter. <laughs> and then, and then someone was like, how do you say that about your mother? I'm like, uh, because it's not fucking real. I'm like, <laughs> she's a respiratory therapist in South Jersey. She's fine. You don't say my mom sucks dick by the dogs. I have to call her like, mom, I just heard. What happened? Is Joe out of work? Joe's my stepfather. It's Joe. <laughs> I figure anyway, if you tell a fight story about yourself, like, you know, if I lost, it wasn't that exciting. And if I won, how douchey is it to tell a story about, like, here's how I fucked someone up. Like, <laughs> so I'll tell you about the best fight I ever saw. It was pretty great. Wild cast of characters. Four enormously fat white women. <laughs> skinny Puerto Rican guy. And a big black bouncer. That's the cast. Pretty good. Now, I don't know these four humongous chicks' names. So I named them so you can follow the story. The first girl was the smallest of the group, which is not saying a lot. Smallest of the group. She almost had a normal human torso but the lower body of something more mythical, like <laughs> centaur, centurion, <laughs> something with hooves. Her ass was huge. She had a tattoo that went across her back, but she had her belt so fucking tight on her pants. I mean, tight, like she was gonna like shoot heroin into her pussy or something. I like to, <sighs> <laughs> it was so tight that it actually folded her fucking back up. And there's a part of the tattoo you can't see. I named her Assback. The second girl, I just call her forgettable, because quite frankly, I don't remember anything about her. <laughs> but I know there was a fourth chick. The third one was the prettiest of the group. Cute face, big titties, all the things you look for in an enormous girl that you're trying to find something good about. Call her best in show. <laughs> and then the fourth girl, and this is the star of the story. This is the star. This girl weighed about 490. I'm not gonna say five. That five seems rude. 490. <laughs> Mid to high fours. But she was wearing the clothes more of like a like a 125-ish or something. It was really, like her pants were so tight. It looks like she had to jump off of a roof while clowns held her pants at the bottom to even get part of her body in these pants. 
And she was wearing a fucking tube top. That's balls. <laughs> That's balls to wear a tube top. A mess from head to toe. I call her atrocity. <laughs> Story starts with atrocity. She's outside a comedy club in New York City. She's making out with this skinny Puerto Rican guy. Now, he's not making out with her classic style where you attack from the front. He is flanking her from the east. He's coming over shoulder, making out with her, really gross, lippy, and his hand is just going up and down her body in the most mountainous, <laughs> like it shouldn't be that, it was like, like she had 50 tits. It was just, and they all had nipples, like a pregnant puppy. They were so into it, so gross. And then her friends walked up and they started speaking to her. And here's the thing with enormous white chicks. They adopt two personalities ever when they talk. Either the hillbilly white dudes that will fuck them and then you start getting like, you know, the honey boo boo mom type chick or the Latino and black drug dealers that will fuck enormous white chicks. One of those two personalities is coming up. These girls went with the Latino, black, kind of weird, uh, like, drug... It was weird. They walked up and they were just like, uh, like girl, we got to go. Like, I, like, I didn't expect that voice out of her mouth. Come on, girl, we got to go. <laughs> Puerto Rican guy said something, blah, blah, grande, mommy, something. <laughs> I don't know, I don't speak Spanish. And they walk up the block. Several moments later, I hear a fucking commotion that sounds like fat fighting. So, <laughs> as a fat guy, I have an ear for it. <laughs> so, I roll up to the end of the block and I watch what's happening. And these four chicks are fighting with this big black bouncer dude. I don't know what the fight's about, I just know they are fucking heated up. They're screaming. They're throwing punches. They're making all kinds of fucking noise. And at one point, atrocity is right up in his shit. And he pushes her, and she is off balance. And she falls back in the most, just the softest, gentle, almost like someone just kicked over like a, you know, like a plastic kid seesaw. Like it just, she just kind of went with it because it was just like, you know, it was like feet, thigh, ass back. It was all... kind of came back up almost to her feet and then just went, it was like, a, it was a beautiful. And uh, she even said, we, she was like, we. <laughs> and uh, she gets herself off the ground in a hilarious, she climbs up a mailbox, which was great. Just panting. Out of breath from only 20 seconds of fight. <laughs> and uh, she gets up and she goes, uh-uh, and starts taking wild swings this guy. I mean, throwing crazy haymakers. In the process of this, top of the tube top comes down, bottom comes up. And it's just kind of nestled in what I would describe <laughs> as fold 4B. If I was doing a college paper outline on her, on the lines that went across her body, it would be 4B, 4 subtext B. <laughs> Photosynthesis. <laughs> and her titties were out. <laughs> These weren't good titties. <laughs> they were bad, in fact. They were like... So big, they were big and not big all at once. They were huge. There was a lot of tit, but there was only like tit stuffing in the very, it looked like somebody stapled two tube socks to her chest, but in the bottom of the sock just put like a cup of soup, just enough to give it some dangle so it would move like that. Unless you could have like taken it off and used it as like a weapon to trip a horse. Game of Thrones it. They were awful. 
so awful, in fact, that look, when titties come out on the street, they don't have to be the best titties or big titties <laughs> or even the same size on one girl. T they could be all kinds of different titties. Generally, everyone around, dudes especially, are like, yay! <laughs> when these titties came out, like a hundred unrelated people were just like, no! <laughs> like vampires saw something like... <laughs> <laughs> these titties were bad and she's swinging ferocious like in one rhythm and her titties are doing this almost like slow-mo cam it looked like the uh, remember the screensaver with the pipes they were just going different directions <laughs> I think it serves to say they were bad tits just when I am laughing at those tits. Cops pull up. One cop gets out, thinks he can handle this, but he can't. <laughs> it is a fucking melee of wigger, huge white women. Huge! Furious. Scratched up. People are throwing eggs at them from windows, so they're covered in yolk. <laughs> Defeated. And the cop came and he broke up the fight. And he goes, you girls are getting arrested. Now, in talking to this cop, I found out he was so embarrassed at the idea of having to call for backup for these four just human wastes of jizz. <laughs> <laughs> that he actually gave them a choice. He said, here's what I can fit in the car. <laughs> I can arrest three, or I can arrest atrocity. <laughs> and in some noble last effort of friendship, the three girls, as if to not make atrocity feel so gross, took the fall. They went down. And atrocity walked off hand and lump with that fucking Puerto Rican guy. And got the best sad, uncircumcised sex of her life. <laughs> that is my story. Thank you guys very much. Big J Okerson, everybody. That's the story. Fuck yeah, one of the best stories I've ever heard. So last week, I told you guys to leave comments about the best fights you've seen or the best fights you've been in. So here are some really good ones that you guys posted. Next week, I'm asking you in honor of Big J's disgusting uh, affair that he saw, I want you to show, leave some comments about some really gross things that you've seen that you wish you hadn't. Until then, don't forget to check out the Reddit link to uh, join in the discussion. Use this is not happening as a hashtag. Follow me on Twitter. And next week, Joe Rogan, everybody. I'm really excited.